everyone and welcome back to the Deercast. Today we've got another really exciting video for you. We're going to be doing a ammunition comparison with a, a range of non-toxic uh, ammunition against a lead control. So as Harry's just said, uh, today we're going to be testing a variety of lead-free uh, ammunition and as our control we're going to be using a uh, 165 grain bullet from RWS, it's the DK variant, uh, found that these absolutely flatten deer. So we're going to shoot all of these bullets through ballistics gel and then into an IBC filled with water, see how they deform, see how much of the, their weight they've retained uh, and see what sort of uh, petaling we do or don't get from them. So. RWSDK will be our control. We've then got uh, some Hornady Outfitter 165 grain CX bullets, which Harry is modeling for us. We've then got some 139 grain RWS Evo green bullets, uh, and that's at the full extent of the factory loaded stuff we've got. We've then got some 130 grain and 150 grain bullets from Fox, which we've loaded up to manufacturer spec. We've got some 110 and 130 grain barns, which we've loaded up um, to the sort of spec that we have found works. We then got some 126 grain yew tree bullets, uh, which we've loaded up to manufacturer spec as well. Uh, we've also got some 110, 140 and 150 grain Nielsen Sonic bullets. Um, and I think that might be everything. So as I said, we're gonna go away now, shoot them into uh, ballistics gel so we can see what the wound channel's like. Uh, we've got a, w a water filled IBC behind it, which will hopefully then catch the bullets and we'll show you some footage of that and also we'll do our conclusions at the end. Right everyone, so you've just seen we've shot all of the bullets through ballistics gel and then into an IBC of water. Um, and our general finding is, I think, similar to what most people say about, you know, different metals um, of bullet in that the, um, the lead performed quite sort of predictably. Yeah. Um, Tom's going to talk through it in a minute, but you know that's left a lot of, of bits in the in the ballistics gel. The the tin round that we used was extremely violent in, in its expansion, um, and the copper stuff we generally found expanded quite well. The lighter grains seem to you know the lighter bullets seem to expand quite a lot better than the heavier grains. Um, so you know the sort of advice that people give go lighter on grain I think is probably pretty fair. Um, so Tom, what do we find on the lead? So as Harry said, uh, and you can see from the ballistics gel here, uh, we've got as soon, almost as soon as it enters the ballistics gel, it starts depositing fragments of lead. Uh, what we actually recovered um, at the end is sort of the, the shank of the, the bullet, if, if you like, uh, and then some small sort of petals and, and fragments. I think what was, was most interesting was when we emptied the IBC, at the bottom of it was sort of just dust of, of lead basically um, and that's that's really what you can see here in in terms of how we've measured expansion probably the the fairest way that we could think of doing it was to take a set of calipers and, and measure each bullet and what was what was left of it as we found it so rather than trying to piece back petals onto it and, and think and estimate how wide that was at, at any one stage we have just measured what what was left so for the RWS DK 165 grain ammo, um, it was 10 and a half mils uh, when we found it, uh, starting from sort of seven, seven and a bit, basically. So relatively good expansion. Um, and you look at it and you think it doesn't look like it's lost a lot of its material because you can see all of the sort of mm. expandable aspects of it. But you know, you look in this ballistics gel and there's just bits of, you know, we can show you with a bit more video, but there's just like bits of 
of lead all dotted out throughout it. Um, so you can imagine if that was a if that was a carcass, you're actually going to end up with a lot of. Yeah. It'll probably be in the gravel, to be fair, but you know bits in the skin. But it, equally, it starts right here, right at the very beginning of the of the gel. So as soon as it starts going through rib cage, you've got bits of lead, and it. There's no, I, I know what some people say of, okay, well, I'll just cut around the, the shot site or the exit or entrance wound. But actually, I think what this gel has, has shown us is that you're going to get fragments well outside of that, that yeah, area, really. Yeah. But the wound channel is actually quite um, consistent. It's, you know, it's yeah. a nice couple of inches the whole way across, which is, we'll show in a second, in contrast to everything else that we've tested, non-lead. Um, it's all been, all been quite, quite a lot different. So moving away from lead, yeah. do you want to take us through our tin yes. RWS Evo Green, which was Absolutely. 139 grains? Absolutely, yeah. So um, 139 grain tin ammunition. Um, we will show you quickly the um, ballistics gel, which... If we can pick it up. I mean, it's just totally, totally destroyed. I mean, we shot all of these inside a plastic two litre bottle. Um, and it's, I mean, it's blown. All of them have, have obviously broken, but not quite to the extent that this has. Um, and it's just absolutely destroyed. You can see, you know, even even from the entry, as soon as it en enters, it's just turned into absolute. It's just dumped all of the energy in the first what four inches. Yeah. Um, and, and you, you know, you could see it watching the target. And yeah. it because all of them were sort of sat and not sort of pinned down, if if that makes sense. And as soon as a bullet hit it, this thing just flips. Yeah. Um, so all of the all of the bits of tin, I imagine, are in this first four or five inches, which is you know this sort of rib cage, I guess, if you if you chest shot a, a carcass, and then this monolith has continued on through, and you can see it sort of coming out, and that's what we found in the IBC, along with a couple of little, I think this is the sort of jacket that's come through, um, but it's just violent. That all of the energy is literally dumped in the first four inches, which is. Mm. You know, you can imagine the, the meat it, damage from that. I mean, it, that would have definitely not anything you yeah. can imagine over. Um, and the, the, the sort of shank that's left is, is basically the same size as when it started life. Um, yeah. So it was, uh, just looking on the paper here, eight mil. So it's not really the actual sort of shank itself that's carried on through the rest of the carcass hasn't, hasn't expanded a, a huge yeah. amount. No. But what it also has done, which is quite similar to the lead, is that it's left a lot of little bits, obviously, of tin. So you're going to have a similar issue. Um, I don't know whether it's an issue or not. It depends on, on on what you sort of think. But you're going to have a similar um, a similar situation with the lead, where you're going to have a lot of bits of tin in your um, in your carcass because yeah. you've lost them all. Um, so that was the RWS Evo Green, uh, and that was how many? One hundred thirty-nine grains. One hundred thirty-nine grains. Okay. We're now going to talk about Nielsen Sonic. Um, we were both quite interested to see what these were going to be like. We've heard from quite a few people who try them on and use them quite a bit on deer that they um, they kill quite well. And I think from um, from what we can see here, it's pretty obvious um, how they do. We'll, we'll show you, um, we've got a big bit of ballistics gel that we shot these into. Um, and it's, it's quite plain from that, that as soon as these hit, they, they start to expand and then the petals sort of open out. They have a, the way that these are designed is that they've got a little brass plunger and as soon as it hits something, it pushes down and it pushes these petals outwards. Um, and they, uh, it's quite hard to tell because all of them have come off on, on the bullets that we've covered um, when these actually expand, but it looks from the ballistics gel like it's within the first couple of inches, something yeah. like that. But then after that, they, they come off and they just fly in all directions, it seems. Um, in the, in the gel will show you, you know, the bullet goes in and then you sort of see like these three other projectiles just sort of fly off. So you can yeah. imagine the damage that that's going to do, um, to, you know, to all the sort of vital organs. Um, and you, you see it from, from people's pictures when they, they show a deer having been shot um, with one of these bullets and they show the inside of the rib cage. You often see that one entrance wound and then on the opposite side of the rib cage, you see sort of three or four, say, exit wounds or, or wounds where the petals have buried themselves into. So, yeah. And we saw that actually with the, the after the gel, mm. we saw two or three or four, um, you know, more ex uh, entry wounds actually into the IBC where, where they've gone in. Yeah. Um, but, you know, these are all retaining the majority of their weight. There's no, I imagine if you weigh this monolith and the petals, that would be 
that'll be all the way. Yeah. There's no, um, you know, not like with the tin and the, and the lead. We should say we'll we'll show at some point a table at the end with all the kind of facts and figures from this in terms of their original start weight, end weight, but then equally how much we measured that sort of end end shank to be basically. Um, and so on your your Nielsen Sonics, they're sort of between seven and eight mil basically in terms yeah. of what yeah. what's left. And again, we found that the lighter bullets actually it, it did expand um, slightly better than yeah. the heavier stuff. Um, so that kind of ties in with what, what you would probably expect. Um, so that is the Nielsen Sonics. Um, if you want to kill things, I think that's definitely going to do the job. Um, moving on to my favourite probably, which is the Barnes TTS-X. We've got 110 grains and 130 grain bullets. Um, so you can actually, you, you can see that, again, the lighter bullets have actually expanded a little bit better. Um, than the heavier bullets. I'm not sure how much advantage you actually get by by using heavier heavier rounds. I mean, I've used the 100 grain, 110 grain barns quite a lot and had quite a lot of, a lot of success with it. I haven't used the 130s, um, but I imagine, I imagine they're quite good. I mean, the barns are the one copper round that have consistently retained their petals um, and they've expanded quite um, reliably, mm. I'd say. Um, you know, we've got four rounds here and all of them look pretty similar. Um, and again, they've they've retained all their weight, so I think I think they're they're quite a good they're quite a good option. Um, the ballistics gel, I think um, I'm not sure we got one of those actually. Um, Don't think it survived. <laughs> they not have survived. Um, but I think from memory, it, it it shows that they they dump a lot of the energy in the first four yeah. or five inches. Uh, and it th this 110 grain uh, Barnes TTSX bullet was our best performing when you measured the the splay of what was left. So. That that one there has opened out to seventeen point two mil from a sort of original of seven mil basically. So it's it has it's opened a out a lot and retained, I think importantly, retained those petals the whole way through. So yeah. you can imagine that seventeen mil wound channel goes the whole way through the carcass, mm. basically. I think if you're worried about contamination of any sort, you know, if you don't want anything in your carcass, these these are the things to, to shoot because they just you know, they, the pet petals just don't seem to come off. No. Um, I've had a couple that, that have come off, but only from, I think, shooting quite hard things, mm. um, not from actual carcasses. So, um, yeah, I think we'd be quite, yeah. quite impressed with those. Moving on, Tom. Uh, so next, got the Hornady CX uh, Outfitter Bullets, um, 165 grain bullet, um, seemed to perform very well. Um, initially, when we sort of looked at it, actually, from the splay, it... I suppose because of the size of the bullet, it didn't look like it had deformed that much. Um, but actually, it's it's doubled its its diameter, radius, whatever it is, um, out to fourteen mil. Um, seemed to do sort of fairly normal for copper in terms of damage, in terms of the ballistics gel. Um, not much more to say about it, really. I don't think. No. Um, sort of. I mean, it's it's slightly more petals, isn't it? Yeah. Than, um, and I'm not sure quite how the technology of this is, but it, you know, it, it, the 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 barn stuff is four petals. Um, the uh, Peregrine uh, Nielsen Sonic Nielsen Sonic stuff is three, and this is what five something like that. Yeah. Um, so you get a lot more get a lot more petals from it, but yeah. apart from that, it seems fairly similar. Yeah. Um, so we take that one, and then if we move on to um, the U tree, which were 126.5 grain. Um, quite hold that, I think. Yeah, I should show it, you sort of what's happened to it. This was probably the most surprising uh, in terms of results, in that it's not got petals left on it. Um, and actually, when we went back into the IBC to sort of see see if we could find petals, we we couldn't find anything. It it, it had basically vaporized, and you're just left with this this shank at the end, which. Um, again, looking on our, our list here, it was nine point two mil, so it's only only slightly bigger than when it when it first went in. And I think we've got um, yeah, we have a ballistics gel of it here, um, and I don't know, an inch in, you can basically see it, it has started to to expand very nicely. So that's sort of start of it, and it's come through yeah. to about here, and then it's really opened up and caused some pretty immense immense damage really mm -hmm. um to what would have been vital organ so um yeah it's quite hard to say isn't it about where the petals could be we didn't actually find any of them no um, they're, not, they're not in this gel from no. what we can see so they've they would have carried on through and mm. ibc was at the end here so they've they've i don't know vaporized on the way into the ibc yeah. or in the ibc yeah. itself 
similar to the Nielsen Sonic then, in, yeah. in the sense that sort of petals fly off. I think obviously trying to sort of recreate what a lead bullet would do. Yeah. Um, uh, so then the, the two we have, have left are the two Fox bullets, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, and I've been using these quite a lot recently. Uh, so we've got Fox 130 grain and Fox 150 grain. Uh, and very sort of pleasingly, you can see that they, they all expand or both have expanded um, really quite quite nicely. Um, the Fox 130 grain, surprisingly, has lost all of it. So it's expanded and then lost all of its its petals. So mm. when we came to do that sort of fairness measurement, if you like, in terms of um, how wide the shank was at the end, uh, the 130 grain is, is 9.2 mil. And then the Fox 150 grain has actually expanded a hell of a lot. Um, and is our second best performer in that sort of category because it's 16.5 mil. Uh, in terms of the ballistics gel, I think we've got both 130 and mm -hmm. 150 here. Um, so that's 130, and you can see almost as soon as it goes in again, about an inch in, yep. it, it has started um, deforming. So start there, come in, and it's it's rapidly. Um, cause some pretty serious devastation there. Mm -hmm. And the same for the 150 actually, 150 grain bullet in terms of start here, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't know, maybe even slightly less than an inch in, mm -hmm. it has caused a humongous uh, wound channel, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected. I would have thought 150 would have taken slightly longer mm -hmm. having gone through to, yeah. to start creating that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. that channel. Yeah. Um, so again though, I think if we hadn't, if this hadn't, if the 130 hadn't gone into the IBC, for instance, I think, yeah. I think both of them would have kept all their petals, mm -hmm. which I think again is positive, really. And the the way it's it's deformed, to me, is is quite pleasing because it's it's not been forced open in a the barns are constructed in such a way that they do open in in three petals because that's the way they're made. Yeah. Whereas this, the way it's it has deformed, implies to me that it is just a softer metal mm -hmm. because it's a much more natural sort of mushroom, yeah. mushroom shape. It doesn't kind of open in a sort of slicing way that no. the, the Nielsen Sonic, you know, which is like sort of three little knives. Yeah. That's more like like you say a sort of mushrooming. Of it, yeah, it's a, it almost. I, I think this certainly this hundred and fifty grain bullet. If you gave that to someone who didn't really know a huge amount about sort of bullet composition, mm. they'd perhaps potentially even think that was a lead. Yeah, lead bullet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it seems to behave like that, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think that that's probably our, our well, we're not going to draw a conclusion in terms of which bullet is is best, um, yeah. because what we've done here is is shown how they perform on ballistics gel and in terms of expansion, not necessarily in the in the field. And importantly, we haven't commented on on accuracy because I think there there's so many different variables there uh, in terms of whether it likes your rifle, what charge weight you've used, what seating depth you've gone to, etc. That. Um, we're just not going to get into that on certainly not in this in this video. But at the same time, we've not had any disasters with any of them in terms of, of accuracy or yeah. grouping or anything like that. Um, and I think, as, as Harry sort of said, when we sort of opened this, we've probably come to very much the same conclusions that other people have, that tin is incredibly violent, um, or seems to be anyway. Um, and then a lot of different methods in terms of expansion but also different results in terms of how they performed but probably for me the, the take-home conclusion is that copper seems to expand does seem to work unlike a lot of people say in terms of mm. just penciling through things well I, I think we can show from the ballistics gel and from the bullets themselves they all do expand uh, and they all do the the job they're designed to do yeah yeah i think it's it's, it's bullets for for jobs isn't it really yeah. they're, they're all they've all got their benefits in their own ways if you want something that expands very violently then there's the tin stuff if you want something that's a bit more um uh, you know reliable in terms of expansion then there's the sort of um there's a the barn stuff or if you really want to knock things down then there's the um the nelson side stuff yeah. which i think we are gonna have to try some of that on um on live quarry and see, see yeah. what it does um but you know I, I think it's important not to necessarily draw any particular conclusions because it's, it's very much up to what you want um the job for but like you say i think we've proven that the copper definitely expands and it, it definitely does yeah. the job and so we've we've used some of these on live quarry and we'll we'll continue sort of putting out little update videos as we as we use them at the moment i think you're using the barns mm -hmm. 110 grain ttsx i'm using yeah. the fox predominantly 130 and 150 grain stuff I think so, I'm going to try the Hornady next. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put some, put some. So we'll put some stuff out as as when we go. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us all. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Uh, and very importantly, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe.